had the sister's boyfriend. Uh, yeah, Shakur oh, wow. Stevenson, yep. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joette Gonzalez, he's been, he's been with his sister for three years. Right. It's Friday, he's, guys. Pound 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 uh, I'll stay focused because we got football on here, and we play a little game called Book It or Forget It. I'm going to make a statement, and you guys tell us whether we are booking it or forgetting it. Sure. And you sure. just saw that was Michael Bennett. Do you think he's the championship piece for your Dallas Cowboys. Forget it. And I'm not saying that he's going to have a negative impact on the Dallas Cowboys. I like Michael Bennett as a person and as a player. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that he's not the missing ingredient to success. Their issue is not him. Mm -hmm. Their issue is not their defensive line, per se, in my estimation. Uh, when you think about the Dallas Cowboys, you got to pay attention to that secondary. And offensively, you got to pay attention to their, uh, you know, their quarterback and their receivers. Um, forget it. It's not, he's not going to win in the Super Bowl. But to me, it's not even about the Cowboys. This is about the Eagles. If you're a Philadelphia Eagles fan right now, mm -hmm. Chris Long retires. So you trade Bennett. Mm -hmm. You do a deal with Bill Belichick. Usually if Bill Belichick comes knocking, hey, I'll give you a fifth-round pick for this guy. No, no, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, see you. I'll, I'll talk to someone else. And now Belichick's turning around and trading him to the Cowboys. Somehow you need a pass rush. Your guy retired, and the other guy you traded is going to play for your divisional rival. I would be hot if I was an Eagles fan right now. Yeah. Patriots host the Cowboys November 24th. What do we got here next? Book it or forget it, Max. The Patriots will beat the Browns by more than two touchdowns. Forget it. I. You're still on that train? Yeah, I think, you the, are? I think the Browns oh, okay. have a sneaky good shot in an upset here. No. <laughs> yep. I do. The Patriots have played an awful schedule they, they the only good team they played are the bills they probably should have lost that game and um otherwise they haven't played an nfl team. <coughs> the browns are very talented <clears throat> odell's not going even with gilmore shadowing him he's not going to be quiet all season there's a lot of pressure on that team to succeed they have too much talent to be terrible all year i'm not going to pick them to win but they'll, they'll definitely beat the spread you kind of just What's picked the them to win two tds that's a lot i'm gonna go with it Book it. Um, here's the reason why. And, I'm, I, and I'll acknowledge there's some trepidation on this part. I think that the Browns could lose a close game. But I'm going to book it because I want to see more. And here's the thing. Freddie Kitchens against Bill Belichick might be the biggest mismatch of this entire NFL season. Yeah. Freddie Kitchens yeah. against Bill Belichick. And with Baker Mayfield being an interception waiting to happen against that yeah, defense. That's why you guys, I'm surprised by your that's, response that's right what, now. I'm, I'm like, saying, am I'm I missing saying, something? This is in I'm, New I'm, England. I'm, listen, this is New England. Number one this defense. Is, what, but it's, it's, it's two touchdowns. That's the only reason why. We, nobody, everybody thinks that New England's going to win. You could say seven to ten points. But when him. you say two touchdowns, that's a lot. But I'm still going to book it because I think that defense is going to rattle uh, 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 Baker Mayfield and confuse Freddie look, Kitchens. Look. Sam Darnold saw ghosts. <clears throat> yeah, no Who doubt. Sam Dar And by the way, you're right, because Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, same draft class, yeah. another young quarterback. But the Browns have so much more talent than the Jets. When you think, look at the teams the Patriots have played. No, no, Literally no, I agree one with the good week. team. Yeah, the and they AFC. probably and, and if that quarterback isn't in concussion protocol, I, I, there's a good chance they lose to the only but good it, team they play. But your argument goes out the window because you normally pick the Patriots. Yep. To come out of the AFC. So no matter how weak their schedule is, come playoff time, they're not going against a weak team. If you're there. asking me who do I think is. is better, I think the Patriots are better they're for in the Fox same Burr. reason you do. They're in Fox and also the coach and, and every. But what I'm saying is when you smell an upset sometimes, even though Belichick prepares the guys for a different team and they're always on their game and everything, it would be hard not to underestimate the Browns in these circumstances. And the Browns are playing for a lot right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Book it or forget it. The Texans will blow out the Raiders. No, I'm going to say forget it. I don't think it's a blowout. I think the listen, Deshaun, <clears throat> excuse me, Deshaun Watson is obviously very gifted. They struggled a little bit last week. I'm still not sold on Bill O'Brien. I think the Texans could win this game, but I'm certainly not going to assume that the Raiders are going to be blown out. I think that Mike Mayock and John Gruden are doing a good job, and I think that they've got the Raiders back in a competitive mode. Give credit where credit is due in that regard. I think this will be a relatively close game, although I think the Texans will win. Max, book it. Oh, sorry, I, you didn't I, answer. I, I would book it, actually. <coughs> I don't like the Raiders' pass defense, and, and when you have Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins mm -hmm. going against, you better have a good pass defense. I, I smell a blowout here, actually. All right, book it or forget it. Will Russell Wilson throw for over 200 yards? <laughs> 200 yards? 
Book it. Yeah. Book yeah. it. Yeah. That ain't even a That's question. an easy one. Book. All right. Book it or forget it. The Saints should start Drew Brees Sunday against the Cardinals. Now, keep in mind. In the it. first half, by the way. Yeah. Against the Falcons? Yeah. 200 yards in the first half, I no. should say. Yeah, yeah. But, but, Book keep, it. but keep in mind, no, it's the Cardinals this week, and then they have the bye, and then uh, then it would be the Falcons. So, do you I, think they should start him? I, I don't think they should start him. I think they should sit him. And, and, and listen, they're not going to jeopardize him. They wouldn't put Drew Brees in unless he was 100% because mm-hmm. when you're 5-0 and with Teddy Bridgewater, what's the urgency to put Drew Brees in? So, obviously, if you're bringing him back, it's because you believe he's 100%. My point is, what's the harm in waiting a couple of more weeks? You got Arizona. You can win without him. You've got a bye week after that. That's two full weeks more that you can utilize that to rest and strengthen that thumb area as well. And I say that's the, that's the, that's the path I think that they should go in. I don't think that they should bring Drew Brees back now. Easily book it for them to play, for them to sit Breeze and, 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 and uh, oh, so start Breeze. So I'm going to say forget it because f- there's no downside to starting Bridgewater. If you win, you give Drew Breeze this week and the bye. Nice mm-hmm. long rest. And what's been the criticism of Drew Breeze? Like last year, he wore down as the season wore on in the playoffs. So you have a fresh Drew Breeze going forward. And even in terms of like quarterback controversy, because usually if a guy goes 6-0, and yeah. he, he keeps the job. But it's Drew Breeze in New yeah. Orleans. On the other hand, if Teddy Bridgewater loses to, to, to Arizona, he's 5-1. and one. You're sitting at 6-2. and two. And now there's – not that there would be a controversy anyway, but now it's very clear Drew Brees is getting the ball back when yeah. he comes back nice and healthy. Forget playing Drew Brees against the Cardinals. Bad idea. All right, book it or forget it, Max. Saquon Barkley will be the best player on the field when the Giants face the Lions. Saquon Barkley will be the best player on the field whenever he steps onto the field in Mm. any game. Who's better than Saquon Barkley? Book it. Book it. Okay. And I'm complicated about that. He's special. Uh, Book it or forget it, Stephen A., the Panthers will end the 49ers' undefeated season. Forget it. This is in San Fran. Oh, outside of San Fran, about an hour away yeah, from yeah, San yeah. Fran. St. Clair Stadium. Uh, but, but, I, but I will tell you, I would say forget it. If they were in Carolina, I might have a different feeling about this. But in San Fran, I don't think that's going to be the case. Mm-hmm. I'm right with you. Book it. Uh, right. Oh, sorry. Uh, forget it. Forget it for the exact same reason. Yeah. In San Fran will be They're the difference between two teams playing well. Uh, book it or forget it, Max. Dolphins will get their first win against the Steelers. <sighs> I'm so tempted to say book it. So book it. Go with your heart. No, no. Because it's going to be too much fun to watch a a, a winless team this year. The Dolphins at times have looked like the worst team ever. I'm going to say they're going winless this year. Forget it. I'm going with the Steelers. They're my team, obviously. Um, I'm not pleased with what has happened to them. They've got a third-string quarterback now, what have you. But the Dolphins are so pathetic, so moribund, so embarrassing, (laughs) embarrassingly bad. Uh, you know, and it hurts me to say that because, you know, I, I, I personally don't like situations where you got a black GM, you got a black coach, and they're put in this kind of position where clearly Stephen Ross has the Miami Dolphins in rebuilding or retooling wall. And I know that they made some deals that's going to improve the team moving forward. Mm-hmm. But deal, dealing with don't what they Stephen have to deal Ross with this year, the, it bothers me. Don't let me. Stephen Ross off the hook. Since when has Miami not been in a rebuilding mode since Dan Marino? I mean, they're always in a rebuilding mode. They're just t- – it's not rebuilding – it's a terrible well, franchise well, with a terrible well, owner. Well, well, That's what in, it is. In the past, they didn't tell us that. This year, they did. Right. It's a, that, <laughs> that is, that is they've they been hot garbage for decades. Yes. And they've had an owner who's had the team for a while, and he's been terrible, and so they're terrible. It's a lot of terrible, and you want to see more terrible. Rebuilding. You want to keep seeing them yeah. lose. All right, uh, book it or forget it, Stephen A. This one, I feel like it's kind of interesting. The Chiefs will be competitive against the Packers. Here's why. Because when we were sitting here the other day and you guys were talking about you would take Aaron Rodgers, you would take the Chiefs, and Keyshawn was holding it against the Chiefs, that uh, Mahomes, excuse me, all the talent that's around them. Now we get to see this team without having Mahomes. Exactly. You think they do anything? No, I think they make it competitive. I think they ultimately lose this game. It's in Kansas City, that rabid fan base at Arrowhead Stadium. I mean, I I think it's something that will benefit them in terms of keeping them competitive in this game. Mm -hmm. When you have the requisite weapons that they have in Hill and Kelsey, um, Shady McCoy, Williams, etc., with Andy Reid doing the play calling, uh, I I definitely think it's a situation where – 
they can make the game interesting because as great as Aaron Rodgers looked last week, the bottom line is the offense doesn't appear to be that prolific every single week. There's still things they're figuring out. I think that ultimately it'll be a close game, but the Green Bay Packers will pull away in the fourth quarter, but it won't be an annihilation. I say forget it for this reason. The Packers have a much improved secondary. It's the run defense that could use a little work. Um, Aaron Rodgers looked so good last week. He spread it around so well. Some were saying, I think on ESPN.com, it was like, is this the best game he's ever had? Yeah. That, that like, oh, so the run defense is weak. So how's Andy Reid going to use the run when you're down in the game two touchdowns? Or, like, immediately Aaron Rodgers, because it's not like the Chiefs have a good defense. So that combination, I think, means that the Packers can run it up on the Chiefs and they're going to win, but they're going to blow them out, I think, at Arrowhead without Mahomes. How long do you think they can rest Mahomes? And if, uh, as long as you need to. I mean, don't mess around with him. But the fact that he's even walking around on the yeah. field is a good sign. No, for sure. Uh, book it or forget it. Stephen A., the Staples Center is the new mecca of the NBA. Oh, book it. Without question. Uh, with the Lakers and the Clippers being title contenders. Mm-hmm. I've said this on several occasions over the last several months. It's the first time in NBA history that all 82 games – all 82 nights of an NBA season, an arena will host a championship contender. Because mm-hmm. if it's just one team, you got 41 road games, 41 home games. Yeah, of course. But now you have two teams playing in the same arena. So all 82 games mm-hmm. will host a championship contender. That has never happened in NBA history as far as I can, as far as I can tell. And that's, why I th- that's what I think makes L.A., the Staples Center, the hub of the basketball book world. Book it, and not only book it for this year, this year. Staples Center is now more a mecca of basketball than any place has ever been. Like, because between pre, if you take it all the way through the postseason, they're going to be over likely a hundred dates of like must watch basketball. All right, Clippers, at Staples. the hotter ticket right now, too. We had so much fun out here in LA. Some really good moments. We want you guys to check them out. Thanks for hanging with us. Have a fantastic weekend. See you Monday. Yes, sir. Meta World Peace in the house. Good to see you. It's so good to be here. The Lakers are one prime Meta World Peace away. One Ron Artest away from going all the way. Actor Michael Ealy in the house. Miles Brown Blackish. I am thrilled to be here because I watched the show. Nobody called me. I asked to come on. If you watch Power, you know what I'm talking about. Lorenz Tate in the house. Councilman Tate. Councilman Tate. I'm really not interested in the Chicago Bears right now. I'm interested in power. I, 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 I can't deny it. I just can't deny it. Oh, okay. If, I, if that's how okay. I thought, that's exactly what the hell I would say. Yes. But I don't think LeBron uh, is scared. Yeah, it's it's enough, like I'm in the barbershop right now because neither, neither one of you are right. As you've often made the case to me on this show, a lot of times it's about the way you feel. So I'd like to have a heart-to-heart with you about um, LeBron James. And thank you very much. Stephen A., there's a time in every one.